be alone. It's okay to be alone. Some people get freaked out when they're alone. It's okay to be alone. It's okay. It's okay to be alone. There's no big deal. Enjoy it. Do something productive and build that trust up in yourself. You know, look back at the situation, learn from it. Start with yourself, right? Rely on yourself, trust yourself. Because we, when, when someone breaks our trust, we, we, we question ourselves too. Yes. Like we think our, my judgment's bad. I'm not a good judge of human character because I totally put my faith in this person and look what they did to me. So now we don't trust her. So you got to build that trust up. You got to build that trust up back again with yourself. How do you do that? Read, write, learn, work out, and then look for them next time around because you deal with people all the time that they, they made mistakes the first run. They go back and they make the same mistakes the second run. They go back and make the same mistakes the third run. That's when you got to start blaming yourself yeah. on your situation. That's why that's why I said you got to like build a relationship with yourself. You got to learn yourself. You got to trust. You got to learn to trust yourself. So spend some time doing that. There's a process to all this stuff, man. The process starts with you got to shut off technology. You got to go here. I call it the dark room where you're alone. No cell phones, no music, no TVs, no computers. You by yourself. Very few people want to be alone anymore. They want to be around, noise, and you can't think. Be alone. Go to that dark space. In that dark space, shut life off for a little bit. Go to a dark place in your mind and figure out what you want to be. You don't know what you don't want because you don't know what you want to be because you haven't spent time, real time with yourself. Spend time with yourself. Trust me. And once you find that passion, that purpose, your goals, your purpose, everything will just start lining up. When I was growing up, there was this statement, I think it was Pascal, he said, you know, all of man's problems arise because he cannot sit by himself in a room for 30 minutes alone. Mm. And it's very true. I always needed to be stimulated. And when the iPhone came along, boredom was dead. I would never yeah. be bored again. I, even if I'm standing in line, I'm on my iPhone. And I thought it was great. And when I was a kid, I used to try and overclock my brain. Be like, how many thoughts can I think at once? The answer is only one. But I would try to like think multiple thoughts at once. And I was yeah. proud of that. I was proud that my brain was always running. This engine was always moving. And it's a disease. It's actually the road to misery. And now that I'm older, I realize like, you actually want to, again, rest your mind. You want to learn how to settle into your mind. And now, I look forward to solitary confinement. You leave me alone for a day, it'll be like the happiest day I've had in a while. Uh, and, and that is a superpower that I think everybody can attain. The superpower of learning to be alone and enjoying it. Yeah. I know people whose lives have been ruined because somebody wasn't good for them. See, there's some people that aren't good for you. Hello? <laughs> They aren't good for you. You've got to get them out of your life. See, a lot of people put up with a lot of foolishness because they don't want to die by themselves. Here's what I believe. I believe in a one to a box theory. Ask this question of yourself. Make a list of who you communicate with most and ask yourself the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Is it helping me to grow mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Do they bring out the best in me? Do, do they inspire me? Do they encourage me to develop my greatness? Do they make me stretch? So you got to look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship? My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. Move on straight up move on forget them they are lying and they are untrustworthy so move on now sometimes this can be hard especially if they've somehow tied themselves into your life especially like for instance you get the kids involved in a divorce scenario you you can't move on but you have to mentally move on you have to emotionally detach from that human and that's hard to do because obviously they were someone that you trusted. And the reason I know that you trusted them is because they got to a point where they were able to betray your trust and destroy you. So it's hard. But the fact that they trust that you trusted them, the fact that you had that relationship, that's even more reason 
to walk away. It's even more reason to move on. You gotta see them for what they are. <laughs> that person yeah. is not who you thought they were. The idea that this person was a trustworthy, faithful companion is not true. It is not true. That person does not exist. They didn't exist and they don't exist. It was in your head. It was in your head that this person was trustworthy and you, the, they were everything you wanted them to be and they were a faithful commandant. That is a lie. They are not that person. They've proved it by their actions. So move on and at the risk of sounding callous, get over it. Do not dwell on, do not dwell on, on, on what it was. <laughs> And don't dwell on what it could have been. You, you hear when guys go through bad breakups? Don't dwell on that. Deal with what it is right now, what that person is. Deal with reality, accept reality, and be, be thankful for reality. Be thankful that you were able to learn before you invested more, more into this person. Be thankful that you found out when you did that this person was a liar, that this person was unfaithful, was untrustworthy. Be, be thankful that you know it and you know it now instead of later. And you know what else is going to make it a lot easier to get over these situations is recognize that there's plenty of people out there in the world that are trustworthy and that are faithful, good people. There's, they're out there. Go find one of them. But don't think that that person that you had was the only one in the world. They're not. It's great when people believe in us, cheer us on, make us feel valuable. We love when our spouse compliments us. A friend is there to give encouragement. Our coworker stays late to help us on a project. God uses people to help move us toward our destiny. But here's the key. You can't become so dependent on people that you're getting your worth and value out of how they treat you. It's easy to become addicted to compliments, addicted to encouragement, addicted to them cheering you on. Now you rely on them to keep you feeling good about yourself, to always be there to validate you, to make you feel approved. And like a drug, if they don't keep you fixed, meet all your expectations, you get discouraged, feel inferior, work overtime to try to win their approval. The problem is you're trying to get from people what only God can give. Your worth, your value doesn't come from another person it comes from your Creator. And if you rely on people, you'll be disappointed. People will let you down. People will get busy and not be there when you need it. Sometimes people will even turn on you. Some of you, you are taking too much time trying to convince people to love you that do not matter. Some of you are taking way too much time tolerating and trying to get people engaged that don't matter, that don't care, that are never ever gonna help you get into your destiny. I felt like saying to you this week, if somebody can walk away from your life, let them walk away. You shouldn't have to convince anybody to love you. If they can walk, let them go. If they leave you, it means they're not attached to your future. We spend so much time wasting energy because we're so upset about being rejected by people. What if I told you that some of the rejection you have been facing in your life, it's because people are jealous of what's on your life? What if I told you that the rejection is simply an indication that you got favor on your life? God is getting ready to do something in your life. You just gotta understand there's more to know. We live in an external world. Everything is, is you gotta see it, touch it, it's, it's, it's external. If you can for the rest of your life, live inside of yourself. Stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual. Everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you got to flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. And and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark,
but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. Shut the, go in a room, stop talking, search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why?